Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with B vitamins, and we're going to do that um, so in a memory palace is the way that I find that those are the easiest to remember. So hopefully it'll be a good time. Um, before we get into the memory palace bit, there's one thing beforehand where we want to know just a couple of details. Um, these are going to be all the water soluble vitamins. And then there's one lonely water soluble vitamin that is not a B vitamin, but vitamin C. So for vitamin C, if you can remember two things, you'll probably be good. One is scurvy, and the other one is connective tissue. These are the two most important. Um, so in scurvy, that's the disease that you'll have if you don't have enough vitamin C, and so all the connective tissue starts to degrade because you can't make new connective tissue if vitamin C is absent. And so gums, which are connective tissue holding the teeth in place, those will go. Um, you'll have easy bleeding because connective tissue keeps your um, blood vessels secure. Um, so if connective tissue starts to go, you're going to have issues with teeth, bleeding, and a number of other things. But really, if you can just kind of think, what would connective tissue do? Ah, okay. So ligaments, joints, that sort of thing. Other thing that we want to know is that there are a couple that we can, a couple water soluble vitamins we can make. And that's going to be B3, and then with help from our microbes, B7. I just like to remember it's the two that add up to 10, 3 and 7. It's a nice round number. There you go. So these guys are by our little micro buddies. Micro. And then B3, we ourselves can make. Can we make enough? Um, yes, so long as we have, I believe it takes B6 to make it. And so if we have enough B6, then we can make enough B3. I think if you're low on B6, then B3 can become a problem because you have to have that cofactor. So it's sort of a, we're almost good. Okay, those little details down. Um, we'll go ahead and do a uh, moment where we just um, look away from your notes, look away from the board, close your eyes if you like. I will be facing this way with my eyes closed. And imagine yourself where, actually, you know what? Before that, go ahead and open your eyes. I'm going to draw you a little bit of a map. It'll be easier to do that yeah. and we'll get started. Yeah. So. We're going to go visit some restaurants today. This is going to be the first restaurant. Across the road is going to be another restaurant. Then we're going to have a crosswalk right here where there's going to be um, things on either side. Then we're going to travel to a subway. Um, not a restaurant, like the subway that you actually travel on. <laughs> Realize what that sounded like. Food, I'm hungry. <laughs> so we will go down the subway, down the stairs, and there will be um, a section over here where there's someone selling stuff, and then up here where there's going to be food being offered, because apparently I am hungry. And then there'll be a subway train that goes up. And we'll talk about things that happen up here. Last one, so that's one, two, and then the last one, there will be a river with some coastline. And we will say, this is water. And we'll be going in here. And we'll see some things on this section of land up here. OK. So first off, restaurant one, restaurant two, crosswalk. That's kind of the layout if you were looking from the sky. So. Now we can go ahead and begin with vitamins B1, B2, and B3, which are what are going to be in the first section that I uh, drew up there. So go ahead and enter a restaurant. Go ahead and see the tables around you. And there's going to be one table. This restaurant is actually attached to, is very close to um, a place where people go to exercise. And there is someone who has just finished exercising 
and they just use the thigh master forever apparently, and they have really, really muscular thighs. Okay? So notice that first, thiamine is what that's going to represent. Okay? So this person who's skinny everywhere except their thighs are huge is going to sit down at the table, and they have been here before. Notice that they set down a tip before anyone has even served them. TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate. All right, so these two things put together are going to give us our inactive vitamin name and then active vitamin name. That'll always be the first two things we cover. So the inactive form of B1, thiamine. The active form, TPP, or thiamine pyrophosphate, but it's almost always abbreviated to TPP. So that was the tip on the table, okay? On the table, um, towards the center, there are two bowls of food that this person's going to be eating. Moving from our first micro chunk to another chunk, we're now talking about the bowls of food, leave behind the names of the vitamins. The two bowls of food, the one on the left is rice and beans. They represent rice and beans. That's one of the things you can eat to get vitamin B1. So the other bowl has a whole bunch of grains in it. Um, in the slides, it's called cereal. So in, some people may not be familiar, but cereal means any kind of grain, the cereal grains. And so there's rice and beans and then cereals. Those are the major food sources for this. You also can throw yeast in there as well. Okay, now looking across the table from um, this person sitting down and the food they have on the table, now we're going to move to the disease, and that's going to be represented by this really creepy, very tall, very skinny person. How many of you guys have heard of Slender Man? Anybody? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit? All right, so Slender Man is creepily standing there. He's very tall. He has very long arms. He's very pale, very long legs. And this is the first moment that you're like, something might not be right in this universe. There's something a little bit creepy going on. So. He's holding up two large berries, one in each hand. Berry, berry disease, okay? Berry, berry disease, you tend to be somewhat emaciated or um, muscle loss, weight loss, anorexia, all three of those things basically kind of are similar. So just kind of notice no muscles on the arms. So when you see the arms, just say, okay, muscle and weight loss. Then looking at the head, okay? Just notice that Slender Man seems a little bit off. Um, there's some neurological changes, okay? So, points of focus, arms should remind you of weight loss and muscle loss. Head is the next point of focus, one, two, should say some neurological changes. All right, in the hands, we're Barry Barry for the name of it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pause there and Go ahead and see if you can run through that. We had the first micro chunk, which was the name and then the active name. Then we had the foods it comes from. And then we had the disease and things about it. So go ahead and see if you can crunch through that. Ready, go. We'll give it about oh, 30 seconds or so. Okay, how'd it go? Yeah? Any questions or forgotten bits? Okay. That works so good. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's so much fun. All right, we'll hop to the next one. Okay, so this restaurant has a Slender Man in it. That's a good reason to not be in this restaurant. We're going to go ahead and go across the street to a different restaurant, leave behind this previous one, see a completely different restaurant. If whatever the previous one looked like, make this one look different. Maybe this one's, you know, like uh, Red Lobster or Mexican Place, whatever. Just make it different. In here, we're going to, well, it's a rib place. I'm sorry. Whatever you were envisioning, they're now serving ribs too. So 
Um, this place actually has a name, and it's going to be Famine Fad. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and write up how you can spell famine so you can take a look. Famine is F M N, Fad is F A D. These are the active forms. Famine, Fad. Um, you can add H's on the end of them to make them, it's the same thing whether they have H's on the end or not. So if you really want to say famine, <gasps> fad, <gasps> go for it. Um, inside this restaurant on the table, you'll notice that there's a big rack of ribs, okay? And that's because this B2 is riboflavin, R-I-B, riboflavin, riboflavin. Okay. And they've decorated a little bit for Halloween. That's fun. So instead of a chandelier coming down, one of those ones that comes down, you know, and hovers above the table pretty close to your head, um, it's a jack-o'-lantern. And this jack-o'-lantern, of course, has eyes and a mouth, but they've also gone to the extra trouble to mold a tongue, an orange tongue on the inside, and then you can even see sort of a throat back there. Now, we're going to go ahead and draw a black line or an imaginary line from first point. There are four points that you want to pay attention to, focus, focus, uh, focus points, four focus points. One is the eyes. Down from there is the corners of the mouth. So just go doop, doop, and then next the tongue, and then next the throat. Eyes, photosensitivity. They don't like light. Corners of the mouth. She had two names for this listed. Um, they actually have the same disease, chelosis or angular stomatitis. Those mean the same thing. They're the same disease. It's when you have inflammation at the corners of your mouth. Angular, meaning the angle of the mouth. Stomata, meaning opening. Stomatitis, itis, meaning inflammation. So inflammation at the angle of the opening or the mouth. And then chelosis is just a fancy term that means the same thing, and I have no idea why. So... That was the um, lips or mouth one. Tongue, the Latin word for tongue, is um, glossus. So glossitis is inflammation of the tongue. And then the throat, the very fancy term for throat disease, is going to be sore throat. God loves that. So those were the four. All right. So this jack-o'-lantern hanging down, it's been... Um, kind of thread onto the chandelier's chain coming down, if you know what I mean. There's no chandelier there, it's just the jack-o'-lantern. But the chain goes into the jack-o'-lantern, and then it goes out the bottom, kind of like threading a bead. And so there has to be something on the bottom of this chain that the jack-o'-lantern's resting on, else it just fall right off of this chain. You see what I'm saying? Um, I'll draw a picture if you need it. Thing coming down, jack-o'-lantern, string continues going down, so you have to have something right here, else it would fall off. The thing at the bottom is going to be a red blood cell shaped object. It's, and it represents a um, red blood cells not being made properly. So that's going to be normochromic, meaning normal color, not too red, not too pale, normal color, anemia. So there's a bunch of diseases and you can say, oh, this is one of those diseases that makes the thing too red. Since it's too red, we know it's one of those. Oh, this is one of the ones that makes it not red enough. That means it's one of these diseases. So we break up anemias based on the color, as well as size, of what they do to the red blood cells. This is one of the ones that the color stays the same. So um, if you don't have vitamin B2, then you're going to go ahead and have normochromic, normal chromaticity, normal color, anemia. And anemia just means red blood cells don't carry oxygen. Oh no, we're going to suffocate. Hopefully not. Okay, so there were four things, on, and these are what happen, all of these are what happen if you don't have vitamin B2. <clears throat> all right, go ahead and see. Um, that was it. We had the, the active and the inactive um, names. And then we had what happens if you don't get any of it, and we'll touch on um, one other thing later, because there are two things that do it together, so we'll just talk about it then. So, go ahead and see if you can review the second restaurant. We'll give it about uh, 20 seconds or so.
just a few more moments. Okay, how'd that one go? So those are the biological active names? Yes. How and did you put those into the restaurant? Um, that was the name of the restaurant, was okay. Famine Fad. Famine Fad. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? All right. So next we're going to go right here is sidewalk, and then the other side of the sidewalk. Those are our, that's all the next location. And um, how many of you guys are familiar with Bill Nye, the science guy? Oh, good. <laughs> I'm so happy. All right. So Bill Nye is going to be on the proximal, the closer side of the sidewalk, just outside of Famine Fed. We're going to leave there, and we see Bill Nye about to cross the street. Um, he's got on shoes, which is good. Good job, Bill. Um, Nye, by the way, Bill Nye stands for B3, niacin. And then the shoes, there's not really a reason that it's shoes, except that there are two of them, and that's just where I stuck it. So, mm, yep, that's the way the brain works sometimes. You have NAD for one shoe and NADP for the other shoe. So NAD, and then one of them has a P on the end. Those are the active form. So there's two different active forms. Now, the previous, vitamin B2 as well as vitamin B3, now we've talked about both of them, um, their function are, is that they are hydrogen carriers. FAD, FMN, NAD, and NADP are all hydrogen carriers. You can throw a hydrogen, an H, on the end of each of them. And um, yeah, so they will always be paired with enzymes that are called dehydrogenases. Okay? You see those all through glycolysis and through the pentose phosphate pathway and pretty much all freaking over the place. So those first two things we talked about, Bill Nye and his shoes. Lime green, good choice. Um, <clears throat> next we have Bill Nye is kind of shooing across the street a very large turkey. Okay? Oh, that kind of turkey. Gobbles. All right, it's holding up two sticks above its head, crossed, and so sticks just like that, and it's kind of holding them up with its little turkey hands, and I'm not going to draw a very good turkey. There we go. So the turkey, um, some of you might be familiar that some people are like, oh, you eat turkey, it makes you sleepy, because it has a whole lot of tryptophan. Um, there's a lot of tryptophan in turkey. There's debate on whether that actually makes you sleepy. It's probably just because you ate too much. But turkey represents tryptophan. And that's because we can make vitamin B3 out of tryptophan. Um, however, in order to do so, we also need something that rhymes with sticks, which is six, vitamin B6. So the turkey plus the sticks means tryptophan and B6 are both required in order to make vitamin B3. All right, on the other side of the crosswalk, we have the disease that happens when you don't get vitamin B3. And that disease is going to look like a dark cloaked specter sort of a thing. And it's got arms coming out. One of the arms is looking fine, white or whatever. Um, the other one looks very red and it's got a rash on it. Okay, behind this specter is a pail, like a bucket, a pail. Um, and that's because this is called pellegra. That's the disease. All right, pellegra has the four Ds. All right, inside the pail, don't think about it too much, but diarrhea. And number two, we have dermatitis, which is the redness on the arm. So focus from the pail, focus to the arm. Next, focus on the forehead and um, dementia, the third D. And then the turkey comes up and clacks its two sticks together. Um, and banishes the specter, and it explodes into a bunch of mist and ash, and the ash slowly falls to the streets. The turkey has saved us all. Death. Diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and death. The four Ds of Pelegra. All right, and that's vitamin B3. So, um, we had the active forms. We had how we make it, and then we have the disease. So go ahead and take uh, 20 seconds to review, and then after that, we will review, um, yeah, go on. We, we'll see. Go ahead and review this third one, vitamin B3.
just a few more moments. Okay, how to go? Any questions? Good. Yeah, All right. So good. <laughs> All right, so we have finished section one. Now we're going to go ahead and go to section two. Um, so we travel through the city a little bit further away, and we're going to go down into the subway. And inside the subway, on the left, this one I'm going to be pointing to the board a little bit because it's easier than using 800 words to describe it. There is a guy who looks a little bit crazy, and he's selling pants because that's what you do in the subway, clearly. Um, so he's got two pairs. One that has an acid burn, and it's kind of a hole there. And then you have one that looks slightly better. So you have pantothenic acid and pantothene. Okay? And because he's an enterprising individual, he has actually written a sale sign on the whitewashed walls of the very brightly lit subway. And it's written in ash. Okay? Like for sale, pants, it's written in ash. And that is because the active form is coash. Okay? So all of that was on the left. Um, go ahead and close your eyes, see if you can see those things. They make sense when they're said, but if the picture isn't there to back it up, at least in my experience, it can all kind of fade away and fall apart. So take a moment to see, oh, two pairs of pants, one above the other on the wall, acid burn, non-acid burn, pantothenic acid while you're looking at that picture, pantothene while you're looking at the slightly better but probably not super clean second option. Um, then on the whitewashed walls, yep, that's ash that he's written a sign with. All right, moving forward, you can open your eyes if you'd like to. Going forward, there is a table that has three offerings that someone else is trying to sell. It's supposed to be a little snack bar, I guess. They have kind of an interesting selection. The first one is just a little glass that has milk and some egg in it. You think that they were probably trying to make eggnog and it didn't work out. So we have the not eggnog. This is food that you can get vitamin B, oh, pantothenic acid, by the way, is vitamin B5. B5. Um, so milk and eggs. No, thank you. Next, we have, um, have you guys seen a liver in lab yet? A liver? <laughs> Those things are freaking huge. They're crazy big. Um, at least in our lab, there was one liver that was like big enough to be a helmet. It was freaking huge. Um, and was that's... A huh? Is that a healthy person? It was a larger person. I'm not sure if it was <laughs> something that had to do with health. Um, oh. So I've always remembered liver as just like, now it's a, you know, like a boxing helmet where it's red like that. So there you go. You have the red poofy boxing helmet that represents liver in my head. Feel free to replace it if you want, but there you go. And then there's a horseshoe, which represents kidneys, because mm. trying to imagine organs, I found that they kept falling apart because I didn't know what they looked like well enough. Mm. So horseshoe is the kidney, because it looks like a kidney bean. If, you, if you're familiar with kidney beans, that tells you what my diet was like growing up. <laughs> um, <laughs> looks kind of like mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> So bad. I should be dead. Okay, so uh, liver and kidney, two organs, are options in the center right there. Okay, so we have milk and eggs, we have liver and kidney, and then the third one. Thank goodness. Broccoli. Okay, those are the foods where you can find vitamin B5. All right, well, once again, we did this with our eyes open to kind of help it be. Sorry, was there a question? She was wondering what the first one was. Oh, yeah, it was milk and then eggs. Yeah, no worries. No. Anytime you have a question, please interrupt me. Sorry. <laughs> is the kidney representing beans? No. It's <laughs> actually okay. the organ. If oh, you eat okay. liver or you eat kidney, then you'll get behind. I knew liver. Part. Okay, I was like, oh, you eat kidney? The kidney yeah. one too? Okay. Oh, Good question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I eat kidney. I can get on a roll, so cut me off. <laughs> all right. Um, all good? Okay. So next, that was the end of the table there. Go ahead and close your eyes. See the three sections on the table. The glass, the organs, which look like a helmet and a horseshoe, and then the broccoli. Thank goodness for broccoli. All right. Now we're going to kind of turn around... Um, 
because we hear someone rushing out of some, like, down the stairs, and as we turn around, we see this person who has feet, which are on fire. That's the thing. And he has hair, he has this gray afro, like a huge gray afro. Burning feet syndrome is the disease. The afro is gray hair because you can get graying hair. There are some other symptoms of things with B5. These are the two that I felt were the most important. Feel free to go and pick through more details. All right, and that's B5. So um, let's go ahead and review B5. Go ahead and take about 20 seconds or so to see if you can remember it without looking at notes or the board. So you can see the pictures in your mind. and uh, make sure and tell yourself which ones are the active and which ones are the inactive and what they represent, rather than just saying, that is milk, that is eggs. What does that mean? seconds. And all right. How'd it go? Good deal. Um, and just to make sure, because this time uh, COASH was the only active one. Pantothenic acid and pantothene were both inactive. I wasn't sure if I made that super clear. All right, moving on to the next one, we have our subway train car thing right here. And the doors right there, I'm just going to draw the doors. They are triangular rather than rectangular. And so when they open, you know, it's like two triangles opening or whatever. So um, this represents something important. What was that? Um, paradoxal, period, let's see. Pyridoxine alamine, yeah, okay. Pyridoxine, pyridoxal, or pyridoxamine. And I just say pyridoxine alamine. Those are the three different. So pyramid, pyramid for, and then for, and Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle, that was the other thing, the paradox of like, how is that happening? That doesn't work, don't think about it too hard. But paradox triangle is the best I came up with. And um, pyridoxine, pyridoxal, pyridoxamine are the three inactives. Okay? And I just like to say pyridoxine alamine because it's faster and I'm lazy. Okay? So that is vitamin B6. Now, its active form, how are we going to open this strange door that's glowing with an ominous yellow green aura that doesn't mean anything? Um, well, I'm not going to touch it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, looks like there's a piece of fruit left on the floor. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to throw it at the little opening thing. And when fruit hits something and splats, we call it pulp, right? Because it is now pulped. Mm -hmm. So the pulp, don't say the word fruit or any of that in your head. When you do this, just go like pulp, pulp, P-L-P, -P, okay? Um, Pyridoxal phosphate, uh, pyridoxal pyrophosphate, I believe. Um, and that's the active form. And that will go ahead and open the subway car, and we can go in, and inside it looks like a subway car, except there are two things that are swinging from the top. So remember that jack-o'-lantern we had earlier with the red blood cell at the bottom? In uh, restaurant two? Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that's swinging here. Um, except that it doesn't have anything in the throat. So it's just one, two, three. Same thing, photosensitivity, chelosis, slash angular stomatitis, same thing. And glossitis. And then below it, it has the red blood cell, except this time, the red blood cell is much smaller. And it's got a little keychain thing coming off of it that looks like whatever a hunk of iron looks like to you. I always think it looks like a little, you know, like acne metric tongue ton that they were going to drop on, like, you know, Wiley e. Coyote. Um, and if that makes no sense because you had better things to do than watch cartoons, it's just, what were you doing that was better than cartoons? <laughs> but it just looks like 
you know, a weight. And so, and then you have the little red blood cell above it, and then you have the jack-o'-lantern dealy up there, but we're done with the jack-o'-lantern. So these two, this represents iron, Fe, and this is very small. The previous one was a kind of pretty big compared to the jack-o'-lantern. This one's very small. That's because this is microcytic, micro meaning small, cytic meaning cell. So it's a very small red blood cell, anemia. And the iron is iron loading. I should have said this, then this, then this. Iron loading, microcytic anemia. Iron loading, microcytic anemia. So if you don't have B6, then you can't handle iron properly, and it'll build up and cause anemia. You can't make heme, which is part of the red blood cell, and so it gets jacked up. Is what's going on there. So that was one dangly thing. Um, that was wherever you place that dangly thing. If you haven't placed it yet, place it to your left. It doesn't matter, just somewhere in the subway car. The other one, place it somewhere else, is going to be a, um, it's coming down on a string as well, but this one's just a T-bone stake that's been beaded onto the string. So the T stands for trans, and it's swinging back and forth because it moves. And then protein, or meat, is made of amino acids, yes? And so trans-aminoase is what this represents. Transaminase. Transaminases are things that deal with making and breaking amino acids in the body. So we eat some kind of amino acid, and we're like, oh, I want a different amino acid. Or I want to break this amino acid down into energy instead of making muscle. Because... Um, Taylor didn't work out this week. So um, transaminases need vitamin B6, and that's an important thing to remember, and it will come back later. So PLP is the one that's going to be used in all of that. All right, so we had the jack-o'-lantern deal, and then the microcytic anemia, and then we had the uh, uh, swinging T-bone steak for T, transaminase, for uh, amino acids in the protein. Okay, great. So we have two swinging things. Not sure if this is creepy or not, but there you go. Off to the right, we're still standing in the entry to the subway car. A door opens, and out comes a bazooka. And that's great. Um, so from the side, it's going to blast. And it sends off a blast, and you're like, I'm done, I'm out of here, and you run out the, side, the other side door to the left. However, that bazooka stands for side and blast sideroblastic anemia. Okay? Sideroblastic anemia. Blast um, means that you make a whole lot of them. And sidero, uh, you can, basically it means deposits of metal. And you'll get further into that later. So you have um, deposits of metal that shouldn't be there. And um, you have a whole bunch of, uh, I believe, red blood cells. You make a whole bunch of red blood cells that don't work really great. So, that was sideroblastic anemia. Okay, that was B6. So, let's take a moment and review B6. Go ahead and take about 20 seconds. more and awaken all right how'd it go good okay um next kind of up towards here i'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit more detail that was the end of that car we have a little coupler and a little coupler and right here we actually have what should have been a passenger car but we're kind of in um, a reality break. It's like, what's going on in this city? So this is, it looks like a sardine tin, okay? A tin of sardines. This is going to represent V7. This was V6, was through here. V7 is bio tin. Inside this tin, there's a whole lot of biological material. It's a bunch of grass. We're not going to be extra creepy until Halloween. 
So, a um, bunch of graphs in there, bio tin. And this is number seven. I always remember that number seven is lucky number seven. You don't have to memorize another name because the active and inactive form are the same. Um, bio tin, bio tin, that's it. So, th there is only an active form. Okay, on top of this sardine tin that you can kind of see in your minds if you'd like, so you can see this. You've come through the door, you see the sardine tin in front of you, and you're like, what the heck? And it's transparent, you can see some bio stuff in there, some grass. Bio tin, two action points. Anyway, on top of this tin, it would be opening, because apparently something in that grass is actually alive, except there's a whole bunch of kind of creepy looking eggs on it. Okay? And these eggs represent what inhibits or stops us from absorbing biotin, which is why the biotin can't open uh, in our little picture here, is because this is actually stopping us from absorbing it or it opening and getting in. <clears throat> so eggs have something inside of them called avidin. Okay, avidin. And um, I just figure these are bird eggs. Birds are aviary, you know, avian. And so avidin, that's at least how I remember it. If that's a little bit of a stretch for you, you can just, you know, um, think of something else. <laughs> so um, avidin, uh, biotin, avidin, and then now across, further away, close to the, the next car. So we're looking past the sardine tin car. There is a saber-toothed tiger coming out of the other car. And it's going to come and jump at us pretty soon, we think, but it isn't yet. And something that we notice about the saber-toothed tiger, besides really long teeth that make it a saber-toothed tiger, the two front teeth that go down all the way to its jaw, is that most of its fur is kind of falling out. It's only got patches of fur left. And all of its skin is very dry and scaly. So this represents seboric saber dermatitis. So saber-toothed tiger, seboric dermatitis. It's a disease, and it's one that has a number of things about it, but one of the most prevalent is dry, scaly skin, kind of a rash. Um, well, rash, I shouldn't say rash, but uh, it affects the skin. You're dry and scaly, and so that's why most of the uh, saber-tooth is dry and scaly and fur is falling out. Okay, well, that thing's about to leap at us, so we want to get out of here. That's our motivation. We look to the left, and there's a little service um, uh, road that's for servicing the subway, and there's a car on it. And so this is a broader tunnel, and someone's driving right there, and they've got a box on top of their car that it looks like you might be able to jump into. Sabertooth Tiger is coming, so sure. We've had an interesting day so far. Let's do it. So we jump from the train to the car's box, carboxylation, car box. Carboxylation is the main activity of vitamin B7. So if you have a this carboxylase or a that carboxylase, pretty much any carboxylase in the body, there's like one exception, needs biotin. And that's going to be something that you want to know both as a question and also clinically. So. All right, we jump into the box and we drive and turn up onto a normal street and then we keep going and we're gone from the train. That's the end of Biotin B7. All right, go ahead and take 20 seconds and see if you can review Biotin. What was its active, inactive? What was its detail, disease? What does it do? Just a few moments more. Okay, how'd it go? And what was that avidin? Was that just representing the eggs? So the eggs are representing the avidin, and avidin is something that keeps biotin from being absorbed. So if we eat eggs mm -hmm. and B7 at the same time, the avidin actually grabs onto the B7. 
and it just goes all the way through, and then it goes out in the feces. So that's why you can't get in. Open, exactly. <clears throat> Any other questions on understanding or on memory? Is it only raw egg whites that has it, or is it if you cook an egg? I'm pretty sure it's just raw. And then uh, avidin is a protein, and so when you cook it, denatures, oh, yeah. and it no longer has a function. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Good question. Okay. Okay, and um, moving to the next one we have. Um, so those were the three, five, six, and seven. And then we'll go ahead and hit vitamin um, B9 and B12 in the next one. So the car has driven out and it's going through the city. And, oh, look, there's a kind of a, um, a lake up ahead. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a ramp and jump in towards that lake in our nice little car here. Um, and uh, the skylight was open. We slipped down through the box into the car. And as we're going through the air... Transformation, oh my gosh, this is such an amazing car. It turns into a boat. Um, so, the, and the hood comes off and you see why this car is so amazing. It's because underneath the hood is a baby horse. Um, it is a foal, okay? The baby horse is called a foal. This represents folate. And clearly horses are awesome so they can do what they want. So, no, that's not supposed to make sense. Um, so folate is what B9 is, that's the inactive form. Now, go ahead and notice this boat now has six, so the tires um, dropped off and we have now six hydrofoils, which is basically like skis for water. Um, the front two are colored blue, the back four are colored pink. Basically all you need to remember is that two, the, the prefix for two is dye. D-I. The prefix for four is tetra, so it's just like there are two of them, there are four of them. So there's dihydro, because we're going on the water, dihydrofolate, and tetrahydrofolate. Those are the two active forms of this. Okay? So we had folate, and then we had ditetrahydrofolate. Di and tetrahydrofolate. Okay, let's go ahead and look in the back seat for our next micro chunk. Now we've got the names out of the way. We see a boxing helmet, liver, and we see a huge bowl of salad. You probably know folate comes from dark leafy greens, so there they are. These are foods that will provide folate. All right, now we're going to move ahead and look where this boat is going. This boat is about to hit, um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this. There are going to be... So coming up out of the water, we've got little ramps that our boat is going to be coming up like this, and it's going to be going with the skis onto that, off the ramps. But the ramps are made of odd stuff, okay? So I'm going to make this shoreline closer. There was a D-U-M-P dump. Tipping, which doesn't quite work, T-M-P, timping, whatever. There's a dump truck tipping stuff to make this ramp. D-U-M-P stands for deoxy, and you know what A-T-P is. You know what A-M-P is. This is just uracil monophosphate. She's not going to ask you that, but it helps. It's like, oh, what the heck's going on? It's just another energy molecule. Deoxygenated, though. D-U-M-P to T-M-P. All of this is to help make um, nuclei... I can't spell. Nucleotides. Okay, so you're going to have nucleotides being dumped out of the dump truck. And then the main ramp is going to be made out of, you take nucleotides, put them together, makes DNA. That's the second thing. One, two, and then the third thing is when do you need them? During cell division. So there's the sun just kind of splitting into two above it. Um, and I kind of take a side view on this one if you want to. And that should help with that. So these are the three things that having um, B9, or um, folate, is required for. Nucleotides, DNA synthesis, cell division. And they all kind of go together because nucleotides lead to DNA. DNA is made when you want to divide the cell. So, but I think she wants you to know each of them individually. So there you go. And then the dump and the temp are just molecules that lead to making nucleotides. 
This other one is much simpler. It's just a snake. Okay, that's a snake head. There's the snake tongue. I should take drawing classes, but it represents histidine. Okay, histidine metabolism is the other thing. So, rail on the right has three things, rail on the left has one thing. Who cares? We're going to take the rail and we're going to jump. And um, we're going to go ahead and see a large, very large, and supported. So, first, note the supports. We're going to go from outside to inside. First, the supports. These are yellow tubes. They represent neural tubes, meaning neurological. So neural tube defects. This is the diseases. Neural tube defects. This is a big red blood cell. We've seen a number of these, except this one's freaking huge. And so this is going to be megaloblastic. Mega meaning many and large. It means big in this case. Blastic means many. Megaloblastic anemia. anemia. And then in the very center, we can see a little home, because this is actually, we've reached the land. And below the red blood cell, inside the circle, we're on a jump, we're about to hit the land. Homocysteine will be high. And, we, and then that's that one. Um, go ahead and take uh, 20 seconds to review. And if we're hitting time for anyone, then that's understandable. No worries. Um, so go ahead and take 20 seconds to review that from the first stuff at the boat to the stuff at the ramps to the stuff where you're landing. more. Okay. That one was a little bit longer. How'd it go? So when we have the exam and there's a question about B9 um, and it's maybe about the nucleotides, like how, how would I use this to just pick that one part out? So she would probably ask something along the lines of, which of these is B9 used for? Mm -hmm. Cell division, protein synthesis, carbohydrate metabolism, or energy generation? And you would go ahead and pick whatever the first one was that I said, <laughs> nucleotide formation. Yeah. Um, so the first category is stuff that it's good for, second one stuff that it's with the disease. Any other questions? Okay, last one. Uh, okay, B12. B12, we've reached land, and that means our boat has crash landed and it's a steaming mess. And um, maybe you guys are familiar with the color cobalt. It's a very deep metallic, really kind of, it's actually one of my favorite colors, blue. Um, there is a cobalt colored robot to the left on this little island, and he is supposed to repair things, but he's not working right now. So Cobalt, um, Guardian or whatever, he is cobalamine, okay? So his color gives you cobalamine, the inactive form of B12. Then you have, um, we want to go ahead and turn him on because he repairs stuff. So he happens to run as a robot, of course he runs on meth. So, we're going to go ahead, and because we're good people, we have meth on hand. We're going to go ahead and hold up the meth and dump it into him, and now it's methylcobalamin. Methylcobalamin is the active form. And that is going to recycle folate. That's actually, like, that's going to be a question. It recycles folate. Um, it probably won't be worded quite that friendly. It won't use the word recycle, but it's going to be like... Uh, it uh, facilitates exit of the methyl trap of folate. Methyl trap means it can't recycle. Just replace that with can't recycle. So our boat was folate. Now the robot comes over, repairs the boat, and ta-da, look! 
B12 makes so that B9 is recycled. If you don't have B12, then B9 can't be recycled. Okay, that's the methyl trap. All right, so we had those, we had the vitamin names and we had that thing. All right, so now last thing. We're gonna go up over this hill where the robot was sitting and there's gonna be this giant urn. All right, and it's pernicious anemia. Pern, pernicious anemia, it's a bit of a stretch, but that's what I could come up with. Um, pernicious anemia is the major disease, and now looking at this giant urn, there's a little door set into this massive urn, and this door has one guy come out, and he's the one who's um, going to represent the disease, and probably is why everything's so weird here. So, he has a lemon-colored head, like lemony skin. That's a symptom of this disease, okay, of B12 deficiency. Um, he's also going to have his tongue stuck out, and it's very shiny, shiny red, so you have yellow next to red, very striking, and that's glossitis. And then clearly he's a little bit out of his mind because of, you know, look at him. And so he has neurological issues, okay? And the only other thing that you need to know is that, um, how do we fix all of this? We look up. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, cobalt robots that aren't working. How do we turn them all on and make so they work? We look up and then we see um, just, I just see a rod coming down and it's in the shape of the letter I for intrinsic factor. That comes down, turns on all the robots and they fix all the weird stuff we saw and now we can go to sleep and not worry too much. Or maybe we wake up, that's probably better. <laughs> intrinsic factor. If you don't have intrinsic factor, which is made by the stomach, then B12 does not get absorbed very well. It's like one out of a thousand. You don't need to know the ratio. Very little B12 gets absorbed. And that's all the B vitamins. So. Wow. That's not, it's not caused by vitamin B12 deficiency. It's what causes. Um, intrinsic factor? Yeah. Right, if you don't have intrinsic factor, then that will cause B12 to not be absorbed, and that will lead to deficiency unless you're doing something else about it. You can get injections, people who can't make intrinsic factor, or you can just have massive doses of B12 because it doesn't hurt you, and you'll get little bits of the massive doses. There's actually an energy drink that runs on B vitamins. It's got frickin' tons of B12. So some, um, I know one guy, I know one person who knows one guy, <laughs> who just drinks like three of those a day for his B12 instead of getting shots because he hates shots apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just helps you with energy, right? Uh, yeah. Energy. The B vitamins are found through a lot of energy pathways. Um, and B12, yeah, helps with energy. Yep. Pretty firm. Firm. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, how do I need something better than pernicious in England? So one other thing to talk about just a bit is what pernicious anemia is versus those other symptoms of the guy coming out of it. Because that wasn't the lemony skin and the glossitis, which is very red tongue, and then the mental deficiencies. That was actually just B12 deficiency. That wasn't pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is kind of the same thing as the folate anemia, except it's caused because you don't have B12 to recycle the folate. So now it's... B12's fault that you don't have enough folate. And so you call it pernicious anemia versus straight up you're not eating enough folate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're both um, megaloblastic anemias because they both basically are the same thing. And it's very easy to, oh, you have this kind of anemia. We'll just give you a bunch of folate. And if you have enough folate, you don't need to recycle any. But then you, you it's much easier to miss that B12 isn't you don't have enough because those symptoms are much more subtle until they get really severe. And so whenever you're gonna um, work with folate supplementation, because it's like, um, well, we see this problem, you also wanna give B12 because if you miss that, then they can end up having, I think it's irreversible damage. Mm -hmm. So um, you wanna do both. And if you give folate, it looks like they get better because then they don't need to recycle because they've got a whole bunch of new so you just give both because B12 does recycling, but also other stuff. Good deal. Good deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah.